Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to use the Beamer Geeks Pro Tool app. And sort of a walk around of all the things that the app could do. All right, so to get started, you're gonna need some sort of Android tablet that can support the app and can also support an OTG connector to get the app, you're just going to go to the Google Play Store, just type in Pro Tools, and it should be the first app that pops up, and just download it and install it. There it is, first one that pops up, and I already have it installed. So the app is free to download, but you can't really do anything without purchasing the two licenses that they offer. They yeah, offer a diagnostics license and a coding license, and we'll get into that a little bit later on. But once you get your tablet and you have Pro Tool downloaded, you're gonna need a KDCAN cable, which is this uh, silver cable right here that connects to your OBD2 port and it connects to your tablet via this OTG cable. So the cable I'm using is the Beamer Geeks KDCAN cable. And then the OTG cable, some generic cable off Amazon. It was like two for six bucks. The Beamer Geeks cable, uh, I think it was $55. <clears throat> so I did have a cheaper Amazon KD can cable also. It was like $20 and it worked for about a week and then it quit working. So if you're gonna be using it a lot, just spend the 50 bucks on the cable and that way you'll know your cable's not the issue. So once you have all that, your KD CAN cable and your OTG cable, you can finally go to the app. And my tablet's a little bit scratched up, but as the sun starts going down, you'll be able to see the, the image a little bit more clear. So once you open the app, it's gonna prompt you to connect. Now I think Beamer Geeks has a Bluetooth um, device also. You just plug into your OBD2 port and you don't need the OTG cable or the KDCAN cable. And then there's also some sort of connect with, with Wi-Fi, I guess. I'm not sure what that is. The chassis, right here you could choose your chassis. And I'm in E90, which is going to be E89, so generation 2. And we'll connect. Now you should see your gauges sweep like that and connection successful so the licensing the two licenses the diagnostics is 85 and the um, coding is 70 i believe so the coding if you just want to code out light bulb errors or other stuff that does with coding you could just purchase that license or if you want to do diagnostics read errors and a lot more other stuff you could buy that one or it's better just to buy both and then you have both and can do whatever you want. So these are the six main categories. Let's uh, go over each one a little bit, not too much detail to keep the video short. So first up we have vehicle. Right here you could read all your vehicle errors, clear all your errors, your control units. Let's click that. So this tells you everything your car has. Then we'll go to vehicle, read errors. And this will give you an in-depth scan of everything in your car. And that's pretty much it. I'll go over that later on my own time. <clears throat> you also have your vehicle order, which can be used to change the vehicle order in your CAS or FRM module. So like this FRM, I changed the vehicle order and the VIN the other day. So we got that all done. You could have your battery history, you could swap your battery, you could reset your maintenance light. So you could reset any one of those. And then we have remove transport mode at the end. But this menu, the vehicle menu is mainly, I mainly use it to read the errors. So now we go over to drivetrain. We have engine, transmission, and fuel pump. So under your engine, you have, you know, read errors, clear errors, live data if the engine's running. And you could select certain things that you want to pop up. 
So if I were to confirm it right now, it would show me gauges of the RPM boost and all of these. Let's see if it works with the car off. So yeah, the car is off. And here's all my stuff. Coolant temp. We have negative one PSI and all this stuff. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna go back. So that was live data expert mode. I'll click it, but I'm not sure what it does. We'll go over this disclaimer they have. Only use this section if you know what you're doing. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure this is um, it's similar to if you were to be coding on a laptop, everything would be in a different language. And if you use um, Tool 32 or the other programs they have, so the point of the app. While you can use expert mode, the point of the app is to make everything a lot more easier than if you were to use tool 32 on your laptop. So leave expert, don't do anything with expert mode. Then we have functions. You check your OBD readiness, clear all your engine adaptions, battery swap comes up again, idle adjustment if your idle is too low or too high, and then finally you could uh, code your injectors. Then you have coding. Let's see, only a couple things pop up for engine. There's not much stuff to code. Then we'll go over to transmission. Read your errors once again. Functions, live data. Let's check out with this. So engine temp, selected gear, output speed. So all this stuff you could, it'll show you in gauges like it did before. We have functions. You could um, adaptions for transmission, read the VIN, reset the transmission, ECU, and change the VIN. But we'll go to edit coding, see if anything pops up. Now it prompts you to save a backup automatically. We have neutral idle control. And it looks like that's the only one we could code. So we'll just leave that alone. Fuel pump. Could read your errors. Functions. Change change van, read van, prime fuel pump, live data, and then expert mode, which is again tool 32. No coding option. We'll do chassis next. Keep it in order. Right here we have the stability control, traction control. You would read your errors again if you have an ABS light or traction control lights. Your live data again, clear your errors again, expert mode once again. A lot of these, um, almost all six of these are going to have the same layout as soon as you click on them. So we have coding. Okay, so right now I just went into coding and my ABS light popped up. Probably to, it has to do because we're entering that part of the car now. But it's saying now everything went away. So don't worry if that happens. Now when you get into coding, to see all the options, you go to standard. Popular is, um, I believe, data that the app gathers that everyone else is coding and messing with. And it throws it into this popular section. So if you want to see everything, go to standard. If you want to see what everyone else is doing, you could stay in popular. So there's a couple stuff you could code right here. And to code something, you just click on it. If it's in disabled, you click, click enabled and vice versa. And then you click finalize. I'm not gonna go through each one, but you guys can go check it out later. That's pretty much it for stability control. We'll go to safety. Safety is the one I'm always in, coding the FRA module. But we'll cl click on cast right now. So we have, you know, same rundown as always. Let's see what functions. Sync cast and DME. Reset steering lock. The ELV resetting comes in handy. Uh, just that alone makes the app worth it. Because once my steering lock did um, lock on this car. And I had to pay someone 80 bucks to reset it. Because I couldn't figure out the tool 32. And with the app, it's just as easy as clicking it and then clicking confirm and it'll reset it. So you have all that stuff again, read VIN and whatnot. 
you have coding. So we have a couple options and coding the cast module. Now again, here's a popular, this is what everyone's doing. Expert mode is, I believe, similar to tool 32. So just don't touch that. Just stick on standard. If you just want on off toggle switches and you want to keep it easy, just stick to standard. It's very easy. So one thing that I added that the BMWs don't come factory with, you could roll all your windows down and open your sunroof by pressing the unlock position on the key fob, but you can't roll them back up. So all you have to do is come in here and click enable and then click finalize. And now you, while you could roll your windows down, now you can roll them back up. And then some stuff will pop up here that doesn't apply to you. Like this is for comfort access. I don't have comfort access. But there's just so many things that I can't go through all of them. If you have any questions on something though, just you know message me or post a comment and I'll make a specific video on it. But for now, I'm not gonna go through all of them, just a couple. So right here, you can have your vehicle unlock when you shut the engine off. There's so much stuff. You'd go through it on your own time. So we could read the errors. So input brake lights, I have the LCI rear end. So we have safety. And we'll skip, we'll do the FRM module at the end because that's probably going to be the longest part of the video since I'm actually going to be going in there and changing stuff. But you know, now you have your airbag module. You'd read your airs, clear your airs, same stuff as always. Functions, all this stuff, coding. Now the airbags, you could um, code out your seatbelt tensioners, code out uh, passenger safety mats, that stuff so this is the standard this is what everyone's doing so you get that chime when you pull away and your seatbelt's not on so you disable all these three and if you or your passenger don't have your seatbelt on it's not going to chime so in standard it shows you all the stuff you could code out you have the seat mat sensor if you have the airbag light on and you don't want to replace your entire seat or take it apart you just disable that and unplug it well, you could disable it, finalize it, but your airbag's still gonna stay on until you unplug the actual mat. And once you unplug that, you could come back into the airbag module and clear your errors. But we have all this stuff, crash sensor, airbag, you know, all these things that you could code out, but you probably shouldn't. So we'll go to interior. This one has a lot of options. You have your driver's seat. You have your functions, you could adjust the seat to see if they move forward or back or whatnot. See if the motors are getting power or if the motors are bad. We have, let's see, do we have any coding for this? We have some coding here. You could read your errors. Again, same stuff. Sunroof. I've used sunroof a couple of times. You come into functions, you you come into initialize, and it'll reset your sunroof. If it doesn't close all the way or close a little bit too much, you just click initialize, and the sunroof will go through its cycles and uh, reposition itself where it's supposed to be. So we have some coding. So you could close the sunroof with the rain sensor that's disabled. Actually, I'm gonna enable that now. Close tilted sunroof. And I guess if the wipers are set to automatic, but at that point I'm already, I already noticed it rained and I am, I've closed the sunroof. So we have panic close. Not sure what that is. You know, a lot of stuff here. But I put both of these to enabled, so now I'm just going to click finalize. And it'll say coding finalized, please cycle your ignition. You could cycle your ignition, but I don't do that. And it seems to be fine. So we have your JBBF. If you want to change the VIN, uh, change the um, 
yeah just change the VIN you'd come in here and change the VIN on it and you could initialize your Windows 2 also to reset their memory instead of sitting there and holding the the window switch for 30 seconds or a minute whatever they say you could just come in here and do it all through here you have some edit coding So one thing I did on here, all this I found just through messing, going through the app and seeing what all the options were. Like if you Google how to make sure that the wipers go all the way down when the ignition's off, you're going to get some link from a couple years ago saying to go into, into tool 32 and do this and that. And not using tool 32, you just kind of got to play with the app and just maneuver around it. But if you can't find something and you have a question, like I said, just... Post a comment down below or send me a message and I'll try to make a specific video just for that. So one issue with the E90 is that if you have the wipers on and you come to a stop or you park the car and you shut it off, if your wiper is mid-sweep and you kill the ignition, the wiper is going to stay there. So at that point you would have had to turn your ignition back on, let the wiper complete its cycle, and then you can shut your car off. So I enable this option and basically once you shut the car off, the windshield wiper looks like is going to be forced to return to the lowered position. So that's pretty cool. We'll stick with the interior. We'll go to climate control. Same thing again. Read your errors. Clear errors. We have functions. We have coding. You could default code it. We have live data, live data not available yet. So we'll see what kind of options we have for climate control. So we have the combi coding. So we have the digital speedometer. See, I have it enabled and it gives you uh, this little guy. So I have that enabled from before and yours, if you've never coded your car, it's gonna say disabled right now. You would just click enabled and click finalize. Then we have digital speedometer correction, which, let's see. So it basically says it's going to show you the true speed instead of the adjusted speed on the cluster. So we have all this. If you're deleting your TPMS here, this is where you come. My TPMS is working. I'm not sure why this says disabled, but we'll stick with it. Mm, so, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff here that you're just going to have to go through like before. Sorry, I don't have time to go through every one of these. Okay, so we are in entertainment. Reaching the end of the video. There's a lot of stuff here. Let's see, radio system, let's see if there's any coding for this. With the colors and stuff changing on the tablet screen, I'm sorry if the camera goes blurry for a second until I notice it, because I'm, um, I'm keeping my eyes on the tablet instead of the camera mostly. So I do apologize for that. There's just a whole bunch of stuff for coding for your radio system alone. And then you have errors, functions, all that stuff. did not mean to click that we're gonna go into frm for the final part of the video now uh, you could read your errors that and those errors are the little all these little bulb checks now you could read them from the dash also or if you're in the app you could just read them from here and so all this stuff my number license plates have led bulbs my left brake light is faulty I'm not sure because I just checked that and it was in it was working so I still have to see that rear right and left indicators is because I have the LCI tail lights my front right fog light that one is the only one that's actually out so that one is legit one two three are because LED bulbs LCI conversion 
the brake light being faulty i have to double check on that but it might be because the lci conversion as well so you get to clear your errors and it'll cl clear them but the errors are still going to pop up once the you start the car and it goes through its check so you could adjust the voltages reset your short circuits now they don't have fuses for the light bulbs so if your light bulb starts working stops working it's because the frm module or footwell module uh, sensed the short and it cut power going to that circuit and even if you put a new bulb that thing is not going to work anymore no matter what unless you come in here and reset the short circuits you could initialize your windows you could code your adaptive modules now my adaptive modules when i click that they had a blank vin so you could code them but i'm not sure it's entirely necessary you could adjust their vins change their vins and read your vin we'll go to adjust voltages because i want to do this on my angel eyes so they say so you're gonna find you're just gonna find your your angel eyes daytime running light so they say the highest to go is 14 volts I think that's what they say so we're gonna put 13.9 because it's very finicky so we're just gonna click right just like that your angel eye bulbs now have 14 volts going to them okay so we're gonna go back in there one more time they just not realized the the angel eyes and outer tail lights we put 14 well 13.8 volts I thought it was 13.9 and that is when the it said because we have angel eyes daytime running lights now that's a voltage your angel eyes get when your when only your angel eyes are on and not your high beams or low beams so they're they're a lot brighter when they're on by themselves and the reason it was at 11 volts the angel eyes number two and outer tail lights is because when you turn on your headlights and all your lights are on the voltage going to the angel eyes drops and I saw the other day that people didn't like that and they wanted their angel eyes to be just as bright as everything else. So we have, we up the daytime running lights as angel eyes up to 14 volts. Now we're trying to adjust the angel eyes to 14 volts when everything else is on. Oops. So that's done. And then real quick, the video is getting kind of long here. Um, we're in the footwell module again. We went through the functions. You could have your live data right here, expert mode again. I'm gonna show you guys how to code a little, some stuff real quick. So we have adjust voltages, default code. If you're coding a new FRM module, you have to default code it. I have a video on that as well. Go check it out you show and it shows you how to install your new footwell module and so it'll back up your FRM module it's taking a while here it'll ask you for to create the name of a backup and I always cancel it because um, if you change one or two things and you don't like it you could just go back and change them back if you still want the backup created you know that's up to you so this is all the popular stuff that everyone else is doing we'll go over to standard so some stuff i have coded in instead of my turn signal blinking three times now it blinks five times So right here you could adjust your welcome lights, all types of stuff. You have your adaptive headlight errors. If your adaptive headlight is not working and you're getting that error on your dash, you simply click disable on these and click finalize 
and that error no longer pops up. Mine are working just fine, so I'll leave that there. So we are going to, one more thing I have, I just saw it, the double impulse hazards, I have those enabled. All right, to code out light bulbs, you have to disable the cold check for those lights as well as the warm check. So I'm gonna code out the rear license plates right now. So we have cold check, license plate lights. Now we have to find warm check. There's so many, but just keep looking, it'll be there. Hold on, warm check. Here we go, finally found it. Warm check, license plates, lights. Now we're gonna click finalize. Click cycle ignition. And another error came back on, but we'll go ahead and read the errors. Now, as you see, the license plate light bulb error is no longer here. So they're working the entire time. All we had to do was code out the checks because we have LED bulbs and that's that. All right, with that being said, I went over everything. If you guys have any questions on it or if you wanna see something else, you know, just put a comment down below, send me a message. Uh, just let me know some way or another and I'll try to make a video specifically going over that. Or if you're curious and wanna know if either the diagnostics or the coding part of the app can do a certain thing, let me know and I'll hop in here and I'll navigate and see if I can find what you wanna do. Uh, so go ahead, like the video, um, comment or subscribe, whatever you want. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it.